Hello and welcome to the next installment of Law and Order, the video series where I look at and unpack stories from games. In this one we'll be looking at the short horror game Slender The Arrival. Previously being a game called Slender The Eight Pages, this was eventually developed into a full game by Blue Eye or Studios in early 2013 and it's a well made creepy experience. Despite this game being just over 9 years old there will be spoilers in this video for Slender The Arrival so please be warned. With all that being said, let's get into the video. The game's protagonist, Lauren, has parked a car at the top of her friend Kate's driveway. As she walks down the driveway, she spots another car, completely abandoned. She also finds a missing persons poster for a child named Charlie Matheson Jr. After reaching the house, Lauren realises Kate isn't there and the house, it appears, has been ransacked. Not only that, but creepy drawings adorn the walls of the house, depicting a very tall, thin individual. Lauren eventually finds a key which leads her to Kate's bedroom upstairs. Kate's bedroom though are more manic drawings and messages on the walls. These messages seem to indicate a route to safety in the form of a nearby radio tower. Lauren picks up a note and hears a scream, presumed to be Kate, coming from the woods behind the house. She follows the path and manages to see where she's going through the help of generators and lights. This path leads to the burnt out remains of a house in the woods. Inside this house is a very disfigured, grotesque and almost zombified creature, which after Lauren approaches it, disappears. Lauren finally finds her way to Oakside Park, where, despite being pursued by the tall humanoid creature from Kate's drawings, she finds eight pages of these drawings completed by Kate. After collecting all eight pages, Lauren is captured by Slenderman and teleported to a different area. Waking up after being unconscious, Lauren discovers that this area is the now shut down Coleman Mine. The only way is up, and in order to power the elevator, Lauren needs to activate six generators. Nothing is that simple though and Lauren is pursued not only by Slenderman but also by a strange creature named the Chaser which suffers from photophobia, a super sensitivity to bright light. Nonetheless, despite such opposition, Lauren manages to activate the elevator to safety. Lauren makes her way around the path in the hills and finds an old cave which leads her to an abandoned building. Inside though is a TV along with two videotapes. The first videotape is footage captured by a man who refers to himself on the tape only as CR. The second tape shows Kate in her bedroom being tormented by Slenderman. Lauren pushes on towards the radio tower. After entering a cave, Lauren finds writing scrawl on the walls stating that the fire is the answer. She smells burning and sees an orange glow. It seems that the forest is on fire and after being pursued once again by Slenderman, Lauren makes it to the radio tower. After following a hallway and being chased by something, Lauren finds the charred remains of someone along with a video camera which details what happened to Kate and to this person. The lights go out and Lauren is attacked by the creature from the burnt house. She isn't dead though, she's only knocked out and has been dragged into said burnt house. The creature is sat by the steps leading up, watching Lauren. Eventually the creature vanishes and Lauren heads upstairs to escape. She hears crying though and instead of leaving she goes to check it out. It's Kate. Getting closer, Kate transforms into and reveals that she is the chaser from the mines. Lauren is killed by Kate and is dragged away. Lauren's camera then dies. The game then ends. So, a bit to unpack here, but let's start with the origins of Slender Man. Let's talk about this creepy, lanky dude. Slender Man is considered to be a supernatural humanoid creature with very unique abilities. As with any creepy pasta meme, community made mythos, or open source storytelling, the mythos can become a bit muddy. However, with Slender Man, it's a little bit more straightforward. The community, and I guess fans of Slender Man, protected the basis for the story of Slender Man and protected it from getting out of hand or too ridiculous, as opposed to something like the back rooms, which has quite frankly been destroyed by too much meddling. Slender Man has no real history apart from sightings stretching back to the 1600s and the few sightings from the early 1900s. Slender Man sightings usually coincide or are linked with child disappearances. This all began when a web forum named Something Awful featured a forum asking for ideas for modern myths to terrify people. A user named Eric Knudsen, going by a pseudonym Victor Surge, posted this photograph stating that 14 children and the photographer went missing. This small but sinister story ended up going viral and capturing people's imaginations and people began to write stories and feature video games, such as The Arrival, along with movies. Along with the rise in popularity came controversy though as in 2014, two 12 year old girls stabbed one of their classmates 19 times as an act of pure devotion to Slenderman. 
the girl survived and these two girls were incarcerated in a mental hospital under the grounds of insanity. Despite careful development of the Slenderman mythos, there are things which are considered to be canon and non-canon. By non-canon I mean unconfirmed assumptions and claims regarding Slenderman. I'm not going to discuss them too deeply in this video, but if you want to visit the Slenderman wiki then I'll link it below in the description. Anyway, Slenderman had, in the original mythos at least, a visible face, except if being filmed. In the modern up-to-date mythos, Slenderman had no face, even in person. He possesses the ability to teleport great distances. This has been speculated upon to relate to quantum theory and that Slenderman is a fourth dimensional being, but as of yet, this again is unconfirmed. He possesses tentacles or tendrils, which he uses alongside his ability to hide amongst trees with these tentacles acting as branches. Slenderman uses mind control to control what are known as proxies, which are essentially victims of Slenderman who still have some free will left. However, Slenderman is able to control these proxies to complete what he wants to do. Victims of Slenderman are traditionally young children, but adults are not exactly considered safe from Slenderman's influence. People can suffer from a sickness known as Slender Sickness, which is like an exhaustion from being stalked by Slenderman. There are many other abilities which Slenderman is rumoured to possess. If you want to watch something which helped shape the Slenderman mythos as we know it today, then I'd recommend the Marble Hornets YouTube channel which was the first Slenderman alternate reality experience based around the recordings or entries of a man named Alex whilst he is being stalked by an entity called the Operator. The link is down there in the description. The ability I specifically want to zero in on though is Slenderman's use of proxies. In the arrival, Slenderman used a few proxies. These proxies were actually completely unaware of their true nature and who they were and this is because Slenderman had suppressed their memories. They will then become what is essentially a vessel for Slenderman's mind, and this is when he takes full control of the proxy. There is apparently a ranking system when it comes to proxies. I'm not going to discuss them in detail here though. But the proxies we see in the game are rank 1, or a type of proxy known as Hallowed, which exists purely to harass people who run away or try to escape. These proxies will make more sense and have more relevance later on, but for now let's discuss what happened to Kate and CR. So let's discuss what exactly happened to Kate and CR, full name Carl Ross, and exactly why Lauren was there in the first place. To gain an understanding of what went on in Kate's house and in the forest, the game gives us documents along with the environment in order to piece together the facts. This can be quite difficult if you're someone who misses fine details and, well, doesn't like reading. One of the many notes we find is a letter from CR to Kate in which CR is making contact with Kate after many, many years. CR writes and reminisces about the times they would explore in the woods behind Kate's house when they were kids. Well, it wasn't just exploring, they were ghost hunting. Something is crossed out in this letter and it seems that Kate and CR may have had a relationship at some point but had obviously grown apart and the crossed out part indicates that Kate's mother didn't approve of CR. From this email we see that after receiving the letter Kate called CR, something was troubling her. And was troubling CR it seems. They were both suffering the same hallucinations. CR mentions that he'll discuss it with his doctor and we soon find out how that went. In this next document we see that the doctor said that these hallucinations were likely due to them both sharing the same traumatic event. Kate and CR saw something in the woods whilst ghost hunting and is very clear as to what that may have been. CR suggests at the bottom of this letter that Kate should call her friend Lauren for some company, in the hope that it would take Kate's mind off the things she's seeing. CR writes that he's hearing whispers and later writes and tells Kate that his doctor mentioned that confronting the traumatic event may actually help them both. CR says that they should both go back into the woods in the hope that they will essentially see nothing and this will help get rid of the issues. Very bad idea. CR arrives at Kate's house. Kate actually lives there alone since her mother Beth died not too long ago. Her and CR went out into the woods as planned but eventually they managed to get separated and CR passed out after being surrounded by what he thought were monsters and he woke up hours later in some tall grass. CR wrote and told Kate in an email that he went back to her house and saw her there, not watching, but staring at the television. He tried to get her attention, but he couldn't, so he left. He eventually emailed Kate after unsuccessfully trying to call her, so he went back to Kate's house again. He found Kate in the park behind her house, along with a broken video camera and a bag full of weird drawings. This incidentally follows the events of Send the Eight Pages, in which Kate is the protagonist and has to collect eight pages which are, you guessed it, weird drawings. So CR took her to North Cross Hospital and left her a note telling her that the doctors will help her. The doctors did their best to help Kate and eventually she was discharged and sent home, but CR emailed Kate and told her that she shouldn't be in the house because it's too close to the woods and it's isolated. 
At some point, CR told Kate that he had feelings for her, and despite her not writing to him, he still continued to write to her. He tells Kate he knows a place where they can stay and that he'll keep her safe. He writes a note for Kate and tells her to meet him by the street and that he knows how to fix all of this. By the front of Kate's house, we can see a missing persons poster for a boy named Charlie Matheson Jr. One day, young Charlie was staying near the woods at a homestead with his father Charles and his mother Diana. This homestead was on land owned by the Matheson family. Nine-year-old Charlie was playing on the beach and saw a flashing toy along the beach in the distance. Charlie's mother calls out for him to come to dinner, but he's distracted by the trail of toys that have been left and that lead him into the woods. Before he even knows it, Charlie is lost, and as his parents frantically call out his name, black tentacles envelop his body. Charlie was nowhere to be found, and this loss put a massive strain on Diana and Charles, and they eventually split. Now we get into CR's plan. CR's plan was to investigate the disappearance of young Charlie. Now, CR felt compassion for the fact that Charlie's father Charles never found out what happened to his son and hoped that if he was able to find out what happened, then this would give Charles some sort of closure. He goes to speak to Charles Matheson about Charlie's disappearance, but Mr. Matheson ends up kicking CR out of his house. According to this newspaper clipping and one of his neighbors, Charles would claim to see Charlie standing outside of his window staring into the house. One day, nine years after Charlie went missing and shortly after meeting CR, a fire broke out at the house and Charles would die of smoke inhalation and his body would be found in the basement of the house. What's more is that the Matheson home was the burnt out house that Lauren came across in the woods. So hearing about Charles's death, CR takes a trip to the homestead owned by the Matheson family, armed with a video camera. He hopes that he can still help Charles's soul at least find some sort of release by finding out what happened to Charlie and if it's connected to the things that he and Kate are seeing. CR arrives at the homestead and he finds some very interesting stuff. It seems that the Matheson family, generations beforehand, had built their farm upon an ancient ritual site. Frieda Matheson then summoned Slenderman. Slenderman would then, at least from what these drawings suggest, take an interest in the Matheson children. The children would see Slenderman whilst they played and some children would eventually go missing. Judging by this letter, Frieda knew what she was summoning. This suggests that Frieda was told about cautionary tales of legends, but she believed them. Frieda eventually thought that the only way to rid the family of Slenderman was to burn themselves alive in a fire. It goes way deeper than this. The photo of the Mathesons reveal another family with them in the picture, the Hayes family. Kate's late mother was called Beth Hayes. Now Beth died of a mysterious illness, which was likely slender sickness. Is this why Slenderman had taken an interest in Kate? and potentially her mother beforehand too. CR discovers that years after this, Charlie, whilst staying at the homestead, ended up seeing something that he wasn't supposed to, and as a result, was taken by Slenderman and proxified. CR eventually gets inside the family chapel and sees Slenderman stood behind him. And then he meets the zombie-like monster that Lawrence saw inside the burnt house. It's Charlie. Remember I spoke about proxies? Well, Charlie was one of the Slenderman's proxies. CR makes a run for it and is chased by Charlie, but CR drops the camera and as a result loses his evidence. He runs back to Kate's house and tells her that they need to go to the radio tower. She reluctantly follows him there and when they get there, CR has lost his mind. He's gone completely insane. He douses himself in gasoline and tells Kate to do the same. The only way to free themselves is to kill themselves. Kate refuses and leaves, but CR follows through on his objective and burns himself alive, leading to Lauren eventually finding his body at the end of the game. A recorder next to CR gives us an idea of what happened. So after Kate left CR, she made her way back to her house. Madness began to grip Kate though, and she started drawing the pictures of Slenderman. Not just on paper, but on the walls. Frantic messages warning of Slenderman should anyone find them. One evening, Kate was drawing Slenderman whilst on her bed when she got a visit from Slenderman. She ran around the house trying to shut all the windows and lock the doors, but it was no use. Slenderman was already inside the house. 
She ran up to her bedroom and it's not clear whether she was thrown or jumped out of the bedroom window, but either way she ran into the woods behind her house. Now it's at this time that Kate's childhood friend Lauren arrives at the house after Kate called her to come and keep her company and to help her move house. As we know though, when Lauren got there, Kate was long gone. Kate's scream indicates that she had been caught by Slenderman and had been proxified. She would now bend to the will of Slenderman. She would wear a mask and would become the chaser. The same chaser that pursued Lauren in the Coleman mine. But again, that's it for another Law & Order video. If you enjoyed this one, then go ahead and hit the like button and comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you aren't already, but for now, take care and I'll see you in the next one.